Hey guys, this video is going to be another update on the Songbird pistol that I've printed. Uh, this time I've made a new frame, and it is in gray because why not? It's a ghost gun, right? So um, the, uh, the 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 what's different this time is that it is in 357. So I bought a 357 barrel liner. Uh, I cut it down, um, and I, I modified the model for this so that it is um, the proper bore size. Because uh, it came with you know 22 bore size in the in the plastic part, um, so there the, the barrel liner goes to right about there, and it's plastic the rest of the way. And on here, I modified the end hole here, and also um, the uh, the firing pin. I had to make it center fire. Um, so there is some layer delamination there. It's it's been there since the print. Um, it is uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, it's not a crack. So um, I fired some of these cowboy action loads that I've that I've done. They're, they're kind of soft shooting 38s. Um, and I've not tried these yet, but these are uh, regular 38s and I've got some 357s. I'll do a test fire at the end of the video. Um, click uh, click right here if you want to just jump to that. Um, but some people ask for a, 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 some details about how it goes together and uh, how it all works. So I'm going to do that uh, briefly here before we skip to the test fire. Um, so these are all the components that you need. Uh, you need the frame and you have to um, Insert uh, th that's the rest of the barrel that I cut off the end um, to because the uh, the barrel I bought was uh, way too long. So uh, you have to insert your uh, epoxy in your your legal weight. I think it's three point seven ounces. Uh, so I've got the, the the end of the barrel I cut off, and then also um, some random bolts I had around. Uh, so there's uh, there's the hammer, which is this guy, and there is the trigger. There is um, a couple pins you can print, and it's kind of optional which uh, which pins you want where uh, to a certain extent. So uh, you, we'll see where, where we go with that. There's this piece which um, I don't always use, but it uh, it keeps the firing pin from falling out the back. Um, there's this alt piece also which I don't always use, and it, it tucks up in here, and this little finger stops the barrel from falling out. If you get a good barrel to frame fit, then you don't need it. Um, but it's not a bad idea to use it anyways. And this is the firing pin. Uh, some people had asked about this, and I'll see if I can get a better shot. So this is just a roofing nail that I've made kind of a point. It's more of a chisel right now because I just use wire cutters to cut it to the correct length. But I think it, it would work better if you did, um, if you did get it to a point. And getting the length right is really tricky because you don't want it to um, stick out so far that when the hammer comes down on it, it's swinging um, right over the top of it. Um, and uh, if it's too short, then it'll, it'll, you know, the hammer will hit it and then it won't, uh, it won't strike the firing pin enough. Um, and also if it's too long and if you got really good rubber band tension, you might even actually pierce the primer, which would, you'd have a bad day. So um, let's put this together, and you guys can see um, how it works. Um, I think you kind of have to engage these two, and then drop it in. I found it really tricky to get the hammer in there, independent of the trigger. So this is the pivot for the hammer, so you can see it goes back and forth there. So for the pivot, you don't need any um, rubber band action. So you can use any sort of pen in here. And then over here, you you need a pen so you can, that has the rubber band little guys. Uh, and then here you can use, you could use one of these, but I don't have one. So I'll put that guy there and that's it. Um, Normally you put a rubber band around this little hook in the trigger and that bar there, and so that will help you reset the trigger. So it'll pull the trigger forward so that after you fire, let me simulate a rubber band here. After you fire, if you have some tension pulling the, the trigger forward and you pull the hammer back, it will reset the trigger for you. Um, I don't have any small rubber bands around. Uh, I'll have to go in the house and grab them. Um, but let's, let's keep going with the build. We'll drop our firing pin in. And you can see it sticks out right there, maybe, yeah. Okay, and then uh, depending on your rubber bands, you might have to um, 
wrap them around the frame like I do. Um, yeah, I think the original design was that the rubber band would just go between these two, and maybe if you use an O-ring or something um, better than rubber band, that, that would work. But these rubber bands are kind of weak, so I gotta go around the frame. So that's my trigger mod. So um, let's pull the trigger. I fire it. Well, it doesn't fire, but it swings the hammer. And one thing I noticed, um, the, I don't know that you'll be able to see it on camera, but um, where the barrel, the side of the barrel and the back of it is actually 90 degrees. There's no chamfer on it. And so on this side, I, I actually filed a chamfer after I printed it. And it was not that apparent on my 22 version, but there is a chamfer way, way down in that corner. So when the barrel sits in there, if you look at this, down this hole here, you can kind of see that there's a small gap there, so it makes the barrel point kind of to the right. Um, and this was not a problem for the um, 22 when I was firing it. Uh, it might have contributed to the, the light primer strikes, but you can kind of hit the primer anywhere on the 22, uh, as long as it's on the rim. Um, but for this, I was noticing that I was I was trying to get these to fire, uh, and I've test fired a bunch of these guys, um, if I didn't mention already. Uh, and I was noticing the the um, it wasn't firing because the the pin was hitting off center, so. It took a little bit of analysis to figure that out. And that also, also explains why I was hitting slightly to the right in my last test fire video. Um, the, uh, the group was good, and they were all to the right, I think. So there we go with the, with the build. Um, if you want help with uh, making, making one of these, let me know. I can help you out. There's that. And if you... Um, well, there we go. See, both things fell out. So these two retainers are kind of handy. Um, so I'll put these guys back in. Uh, we'll go out and do a test fire. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys outside. Okay guys, here we are outside. We've got the Songbird pistol here. First we're gonna shoot um, a 38. So, let's see. We've got it round loaded up. Um, it is cocked, so um, I got a firing pin block now. Um, you take another round and you just kind of drop it in there and it'll jam up the action until you got everything ready. And then you kind of shake your round out. So there, there's, a, there's a basic safety installed now. There we go. Except uh, it looks like I missed. Well, I don't know where that went, but I think I need to lighten up the trigger a little bit. Okay, next up, um, just regular 38. There we go. Okay, I was shooting high. I saw where that went. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to do the 357, which my camera refuses to focus on. There we go. So maybe if I review the video, it'll show uh, where the first bullet went. Maybe the sights are just off and I'm shooting high. Okay. Here is the 357. Okay. I'm going to aim low, just in case. Try to get one on steel. Oh man, that is some recoil. And that is it for this frame. So... Let's see if we can get this to focus. Maybe we'll have to go back in the shop. So remember that that layer separation I had? It went way further back. Um, I think what's happening is um, the the front of the barrel is curved like that, and so is the recess it sits into. So uh, I think pushing forward, it's acting like a wedge. Um, so you know what? I could probably fix this. Um, I don't probably won't, but um, this would be a nice wall piece. Um, 
I will, uh, I could um, ABS glue this all back together. Um, so next time I'll have to watch out for that layer separation. That was really unusual for my printer to do, to do that. It's uh, very rare that that happens. You can see the line goes all the way back here, but um, it's like a grain of wood, you know. If you start a crack and you start beating on it, it's going to spread really easily. And you can see it goes all the way down the bottom too. So maybe you can see it. Okay. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it.